Good evening, I'm Chris Baumgartner, and I'm here with the wonderfully talented Anna Klein, uh, composer of the next piece you're about to hear. And Anna, could you just describe how you came up with the idea for Steelworks? Absolutely. So um, about five years ago, I was working in a neighborhood in Brooklyn called Williamsburg. And on my way to work, I went past a, what just seemed like an old factory, but I heard these fantastic sounds. Um, and when I came back, I realized it was a steelworks factory. So I knocked on the door and asked if I could come back and record some of the sounds. They had these huge tumblers and steel cutters. Um, and they very kindly let me come and record some of these sounds and also interview some of the employees. And uh, the steel factory was called Flame Cut Steelworks, Brooklyn, New York. And a uh, month after I recorded the sounds, it actually closed down. So it's, it's an interesting documentary of what the last steelworks factory in, in New York. So all those sounds that, that you recorded and, and the interviews, how, how will those be integrated in the music that we'll hear tonight? Well, they're very much the kernel of the music that you will hear tonight. Um, there's basically three components to this piece. There'll be a pre-recorded tape, and you'll definitely recognize some crunchy steel sounds. Um, there'll also be uh, four musicians playing percussion, flute, and bass clarinet. Um, and there'll also be a film, which we'll talk about in a minute. But they're very much um, integrated, the tape and the acoustic sounds. Um, a lot of the sounds from the tape influence the, influence the instrumental writing, but also vice versa. In the process of writing, I would write sections of the tape and then the instrumental music and then instrumental music and then the tapes. So they're very much um, inter integrated. And can you just explain a little bit about the use of the microphones and amplification and how that's used to create those different sounds? Absolutely. When, uh, when you create big, loud tape parts, um, it brings in the question of balance, obviously. Um, so for this performance, um, as this piece is, we amplify the instruments. So you'll hear that they're very much um, on the same dynamic level as the um, as the pre-recorded tape. And because of all these sounds and timing everything out, the piece uh, requires the use of a click track. Exactly. So um, when you have any sort of form of pre-recorded material, you can either choose to notate um, the sounds on the tape, or with this piece, it's so um, precise when the when the instruments should have specific gestures and how they should interlock with the tape that we have to use a click track. Um, uh, which is like a metronome in Chris's ear. So when he puts on headphones, he's not listening to his iPod, he's actually getting the, the, the beat, which will synchronize uh, the instrumentalist with the tape. And yeah, I was actually wondering, Chris, how, how does that feel to have a metronome going on, you know, clicking away in your ear, and how did that affect the rehearsal process for this piece? Well, it, it definitely takes away any kind of give and take in, in time. Uh, metronome is not forgiving, so to stay right on with it can be a difficult task, especially when there's multiple meters coming at you. Um, so when it gets, when the layers get thick enough, you know, turn the click track up a little bit so something else doesn't throw me. But uh, in the rehearsal process, you know, the first couple days we rehearsed this piece, we would use the click track only kind of as a metronome so that we could hear each part and everybody could learn what was going on around them. And then slowly we would do a small section and then <coughs> the electroacoustics back into it so that they could see how their part integrated with the sounds. And then once we took all that away, and it was just me with the click tracks and Dr. Gaines, as you'll see, because the percussion part is so rhythmic, uh, it was imperative that we both stay right on that. Um, so then, then, then we took that element away uh, from the wind players, and so that it was just kind of a gradual building up to that point. Um, but in, in the rehearsal process, I think it really made for a smooth transition. Um, you know, I learned this score in the same manner I would learn any other score with the wind parts and studying each part. You know, but then having to learn the tape part along with that after the fact, or along with it, I guess, um, which isn't notated in the score. So then I would have to figure out where things lined up. And um, you know, as a conductor, that's another element that isn't visual, so it takes a little bit more time to incorporate that R element into it. I have to say a big thank you to Chris and these fantastic musicians. It's been a real pleasure working with them. It's a very, very difficult piece. Um, can I just say a quick few words? Is also, as I mentioned earlier, the third component of this piece, uh, as you'll see, will be a film, um, which was created by Luc Dubois, a New York-based visual artist. And the screen you'll see is divided into four sections, each showing uh, the same image of footage from um, about the 60s from the steelwork factories. 
each quarter of the screen relates to one of the different components, the percussion, the bass clarinet, um, the flute and the tape. So these, you get this sort of phasing um, of images, so that's something that you can see as the piece progresses. So thanks Christopher for all your time. You're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>